Our first presentation today is scaling the OSDU data platform to meet the needs of seismic processing and image workflows. I want to welcome Lakshma and Ahmed. Thank you. Hello, hi everyone. I'm Ahmed Ozji from SLP. I'm a Delphi SME, so I help make Delphi becoming a reality and help users actually transition to it. Today I'm being joined with Lakshmisha from Microsoft. Give him a minute to introduce himself. Hi everyone, I'm Lakshmisha. I'm part of the uh, Azure Data Manager for Energy Product Team. Here to present with Ahmed. Thank you. So to, to today I'm going to show you how SLB has to make the industry vision of accelerating hydrocarbon discovery one step closer than before. So we're going to start with where we're standing now, what's available, what's being developed, what's coming in the, in the near future, and also analyze, analyze what gaps we have, especially the gaps that is going to have big potential for a big leap forward. And from this, we're going to set where we're heading. And of course, as all we know, it is, it's a journey that have lots of challenges and solutions to come. Currently, we have lots of tools that are being developed. We have been seen, we have seen lots of tools, developments, POCs, across different talks and sessions in the past days. All of them the, the, the demonstrated OSDU has found its own way to different energy domain. We have seen tools for seismic interpretation, reservoir modeling, geomechanics, we're logging and much more than this, which it's proving its value. It has a projected value of streamlining the process across all of these, which is what we're heading, what we want to achieve. But the main question here is, is it enough? Is it enough to achieve to cut that, that down of the explosion cycle time? To help answer the, the, this question, let's zoom out and see the bigger picture first. In a very simplistic way, we can say that exploration cycle can be divided into three main parts. The first one is the seismic world, where we are after a subset surface representation. That this would be mainly the input for the second stage, where this surface representation is getting interpreted along with other non-seismic information, with the main task of getting insights and make all the information needed for the third phase, where we make production decision and how we proceed for, for, for further. If we have a look in, on this chart and try to see what, we, what, what has been developed, what's coming in the near future, where it is laid out. You can see that most of the tools that have been developed focus on the later part of the cycle, supported by its own DDMS, which is good because it helps integrate and make the later part of the cycle can be streamlined, which helping in cutting down the cycle time. But you can also see that we have created a silo. We have created seismic processing and imaging silo. So why we have created this silo? How, it's, how, how, how it results in this one? And how we can avoid this? Before we try to answer all of these questions, let's have a quick look on what is actually the seismic processing and imaging stage. It's mainly composed of three main stage steps or workflows. It starts with the acquisition part, where the field crews acquire a raw field measurement. And as word raw indicates, it has both needed information, useful information that we want to keep, which we call as a signal. And it also includes unneeded information, which we call noise. And in many cases, the noise is overcoming the signal part, where the second step is taking care of this part, which is tasked by removing all the unneeded information. It removes the noise and while maintaining the signal part. Because the output from this stage is a conditioned, processed, corrected seismic data that's going to be used in creating our surface image through the third step, which is the imaging part. These steps is fairly complex and very lengthy. It can span across several years to get from beginning to an end. And this for many reasons. 
the one that is we're concerned about for now or in this forum is because all of these steps run on proprietary format applications and workflows. Nothing is integrated. Different effort has been done, but we haven't achieved the standardization across the industry that we want. SAP has its history tapped in all domains in, in expression cycle, all more, or more, mostly all the domains. So we realize that we cannot achieve the industry vision of cutting this cycle time without removing all silos, without having a one integrated system that can streamline from one step to another. And this is why SAP is introducing a way to do this one. It's introducing the seismic DMS, or maybe a seismic processing and imaging DMS, for short SPI DMS. But the question here that would come to mind, why we need another seismic DMS? We already have a seismic DMS that is taking care of the seismic interpretation. Why we need a separate one to handle processing and imaging, or as mentioned in previous talks, as a free stack DMS. The key, and the key word to, to, to answer this one is scale and scale. Seismic interpretation, or as for short SI, SI DMS is implemented to handle thousands of files, tens of thousands of files. Each file can have hundreds of thousands of traces. We're talking about sizes in gigabytes, terabytes. This is what SI DMS is implemented and can scale to. If we take these numbers and project it to the SPI world, this is a very, very small numbers. SPI world lives in 1,000x of these numbers. We're talking about tens of millions of files. Each file can, can go grow up to hundreds of millions of files. We're talking in petabytes, not in terabytes anymore. So the, the SI DMS will not scale to satisfy the need of SPI DMS. This is why we come up with SPI DMS. I'm happy to say that SPI DMS is currently implemented. We have passed the part, the part of POC. We have done the POC. We have now the MVP part. It's being deployed in all SLB geosolution centers. It's now being used in the production centers. So we are now progressing more towards iterative improvement. And this is why SLB come to collaboration with Microsoft, mainly to focus on how we can enhance SPI DMS, how we can make it faster, scale more. And for, for, for this part, I'm going to leave you with the, with the coming slides with Lakshmi, which is going to show you the first fruits of the ZZS collaboration, what we come up in the near future. All yours. Thanks, Ahmad. Uh, so when SLB and Microsoft we started working together and started seeing how we can enable OSTU or ADME platform to meet the needs of the scales that we are dealing with in seismic processing and imaging. We realized you know, we need to focus on three areas initially uh, because we felt these were of high importance. The first one was with regards to listing these million data sets. As Ahmad mentioned, uh, a typical seismic processing and imaging workflow, you deal with petabytes of data and each of these uh, it's not a single file. Usually it's stored as you know, 100,000, 10,000, or even a million data sets. Uh, for a data manager or a geophysicist, just to know which are the files, uh, which are the data sets that are present, or even look at a specific set of data sets, say 15,000 data sets of the million records, there was no easy or proficient manner to retrieve this information when you're dealing with this large scale. Mm -hmm. so that was the first challenge that we said we have to solve for, you know, if the workflows need to be enabled seamlessly. The second challenge was with regards to deletion. Now, as Ahmed mentioned, you start with the raw acquisition data, and there are a series of processing steps and imaging steps that are done. Uh, and finally, you get the final image, which is then you know, used later in seismic interpretation. Now, during these processes, a lot of intermediate data, mainly test data, is created. While some of these test data, you would change parameters or you would change the fine tune the model, so you would have multiple vari variants of these test data. Not all of these test data are relevant 
uh, after a certain stage. So there is need to delete these data. No one wants to have petabytes of data in their storage system. And you need to do it in a profit man manner. What we found was currently it was not scaling. Uh, you know, deleting more than 1,000 data sets or a few thousand data sets, after that point it was failing. You used to get an error. So that's where we said we are going to focus. We are going to solve for large scale deletions. And finally, uh, we realized as a data manager, when you're looking at these petabytes of data, you want to know what data is where, you know, which project, which uh, you know, specific aspect, which specific uh, output files are you know, consuming your data space. So you need to have a proficient manner to analyze this data. And we found that we need to have some kind of an analytics which can help data managers manage this data, manage this data efficiently. So starting with the first one, which was on listing, the way we approach the problem is we said, OK, first, you know, listing is all about metadata. Let's understand how we query the metadata and get it. So that's the first stage. If that doesn't meet the requirements, we said we will look at other options, including indexing. And finally, you know, we also had an option of changing the infrastructure itself that could scale it. But luckily for us, just with the query optimizations, we saw good results. And with query optimization, we could see an order of magnitude improvement. So we took the query optimization. We ran with synthetic test environment uh, so that we can you know, see a million, uh, up to 100 million data sets to see how the new query optimization works. And you can clearly see, uh, when we started with a smaller data set of you know, 10,000 data sets spread across 100 folders, uh, the order of magnitude improvement was 10x from a second to nearly one tenth of a second. But as we kept scaling, uh, you know, when we reached 1 million spread across 1,000 folders, what used to take 24 minutes, uh, I mean 24 seconds, you can do it uh, again around one tenth of a second. And it scaled up to 10 million uh, spread across 1,000 folders. What used to take 11 minutes, we were able to retrieve it again one tenth of a second. Of course, all of this was on synthetic data, but we were happy with the results. So that's when SLB and uh, you know, decided to take the result the optimizations and implement in a production workflow. And here is one example of the production workflow. Uh, you know, we just tested the old query and the new query. And you can see the order of magnitude improvement. Uh, in the first case, we had 43,000 data sets. Just listing those 43 data sets, what used to take uh, two minutes and 30 seconds, no, two minutes, 40 seconds, you are getting at one, 20, uh, one minute, 24 seconds, nearly 50% improvement. In the second example, where we had two and a half million data sets spread across around 4,000 folders, and you're accessing specific paths, you can see that from the root folder to a fourth level folder, there has been consistent improvement order on the order of 15 to 20 times between the old data, uh, old query and the new query. So with this, we have already implemented it. As Amad mentioned, it's live, it's working, we don't have an issue. And it has made listing or knowing what are the data sets that you have, uh, very easy. We do have, as I mentioned, additional solutions, including index, uh, which we hope uh, you know, to contribute in the future if, you know, if and when we reach the stage where we need more, uh, you know, we need to scale further as uh, you know, the data requirements keep growing. I'll move on to the next uh, challenge that we were looking at, which was with regards to deletion. As I mentioned, there are a lot of intermediate data that we are dealing with, and we need a proficient manner to delete it. And when you look at a data set, it has metadata, and it has the actual data that's stored in blob storage. Now, in a lot of cases, this data that's stored in blob storage is not a single file. It itself is chunked further, sometimes you know, 10 to 15,000 objects. So one individual data set has 10 to 15,000 objects, and when you have to delete tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of data set, you can imagine the complexity. And that's where we said, let's design a new bulk deletion API, which can handle the scale. The existing Seismic DMS API used to work on a synchronous manner where you ping and say, I want to delete this. It would delete a data set and you know, retrieve information. That, that doesn't scale. So this new deletion API, uh, we designed it in an asynchronous manner, obviously, so that it can do the deletion in batches. Uh, and given that it's going to happen in an asynchronous manner, the data manager, the application needs, or the geophysicist needs to know what is the status of the deletion job. That's where we introduced a view status API, which uh, provides that input. You can ping it, and it will say, hey, so many of the data sets have been deleted. These are the deletions that didn't work, you know, that didn't happen, and this is the failure reasons. 
Now this, with this, bulk deletion has been enabled. The applications no longer need to delete thousands or 10,000 data sets by individually calling those data sets. They can just give a path and the API will take care of it. It will programmatically delete all of those data sets. And we have seen that it is performant even with data sets which has you know, multiple thousand objects. We are, you know, when we ran this uh, you know, in performance validations, it has scaled up to 250,000 data sets without any issue. Uh, we have realized to further scale it beyond 250,000, we need to implement a minor pagination uh, within the deletion API, which is currently in development you know, in a couple of weeks. Uh, in fact, it is getting tested in a couple of weeks. You know, we should be able to uh, have it. Right now, this feature is under preview, part of the M, um, M22 release. Uh, and can is uh, you know can be enabled on an OSTU data platform by turning on the feature flag. Uh, sorry. And once you know, as I mentioned, we are doing the pagination fix. And once we have completed that, the full feature of bulk deletion will be enabled by default on all OSTU data platforms. I'll quickly come to the last challenge that we were working with regards to analytics. On this, we split up the solution into two parts. Uh, on the first part, we said, uh, you know, if a data manager wants to know, you know, I have these 5,000 data sets associated with this project, and I want to know what is the size of storage it's taking. In the first part, we said we will just sum the size of those data sets. We will use a metadata value that's stored, uh, compute size, and we'll just sum it up. So that's the first part. The question is, how do we ensure that the value that's stored in the metadata is accurate and represents the size of the data sets? So that's where we said in the second part, we will create an extension API which can be triggered, which will then compute the data set size and update the meta value, uh, metadata value. The reason for splitting it is you don't want to compute or calculate the data set size on fly every time you want to you know, sum it up across all the data sets. It makes sense only to do it when you have ingested a new data set or you have modified the data set. Currently, the first part is you know, design and development complete. It's part of the M22 release. Uh, obviously, it's of limited use unless we have the second part that is under design and development uh, and should be uh, available in the next couple of sprints. Hope to be part of the future releases M24 or M25. With this, uh, I would like to conclude. What we have presented here is the first few steps that Microsoft and SLB are working together to enable seismic processing and imaging workflows to scale better on OSDO data platform. But we understand this is not it. We need to do more. And we are going to continue this partnership where we look at ways we can make data management easier, uh, reduce manual data, uh, manual interventions for data management, and automate some of these. Thank you. Thank you. Um, great, great presentation. Uh, Ryan Jarvis from Rock Energy. Um, one of the, I guess, uh, challenges is performance. And I, I see that you've, you've, you've looked at how you can address performance and optimization within the, the new seismic DMS for processing. And is there any uh, activities to, you know, you, are, are you planning on um, bringing some of that optimization to the actual seismic DMS? Uh, that's currently in the forum, or is there any kind of sharing of uh, future state where uh, in the future you would just have one seismic DDMS that would handle both, or d just kind of a roadmap would be useful to see if, does it uh, eventually retire the old seismic DMS and then you've got this more optimal one, or is it completely separate and will always stay separate? I th thank you for the question. I think that's a good question. To be fair, uh, it's something that we need to work with the community. Uh, on the seismic interpretation side of things, currently they are looking at V4, uh, the API version V4, whereas most of the work we have done is on the V3. Uh, while I know Ahmed mentioned it as a separate DMS, but the APIs are part of the what we call as seismic DMS itself. So we'll have to see how, you know, in the future, uh, future we will kind of, we have the ones for interpretation on V4, and we have this on V3, how the roadmap would evolve. Ideally, it would make sense, you know, to make them similar and you know be in sync. But that's something that we'll have to see, working with the community. Hi, Abhigaswami Shell. 
And since Ryan's asked the first part of my question, I'll go to the second part. Uh, the fact that we are now again talking about two DDMSs for ingestion of type of seismic data, and you've already showed in one of your slides the whole acquisition processing imaging leading to interpretation. One of the things that I'm sure you are aware of, there is an iterative element when it comes to processing imaging and interpretation in many areas. There are many use cases. Having them in two separate DDMSs, when you think about interoperability and the risk of duplication, uh, I would strongly urge you to have a think that how can you bring them together instead of partitioning them. I mean, let's have that discussion because what I hear are all great things about scaling but could easily be co-opted. I mean, what is out there as V4 can be co-opted into what you are developing out here or vice versa, whichever works, not have them as separate. No, I think that's a valid input. Uh, to a certain degree, I know, I mean, it's not a clear cut separation, right? Uh, so if you look at any data platform, the metadata is stored in the same place. You're using some of some aspects of the API to call the interpretation side, some aspects of the API to call the processing, like bulk relation, for example, is a new contribution. But there are certain APIs that are backward, like the interpretation APIs, which are backward compatible, will still you know work. So you do have some amount of uh, the APIs where you are aware that you know if there is a seismic interpretation application which is connecting to your OSDU data platform, it can know the processing and imaging workflow data sets that are stored. So in that sense, duplication is currently avoided, but yeah, this is something that we'll have to see. I mean, processing and imaging workflows, this is the first time you're getting, uh, I'll not say first time, but you know, this is the first step in getting them. Uh, but eventual goal is to make it interoperable, and we'll have to see how you know, we ensure that, that there is no duplication of efforts, the interpretation application knows the processing imaging application workflows, you know, and can, are connected. Thank you. To add to your question, yeah. one, one more point. Currently, the JSolid solution centers, the seismic interpretation is using the SPI DMS. So we are now actually in plan, we, what's current running is we're moving to use one DMS, this is what is being done in, in the JSTC center. This help in streamline between the processing and the interpretation, because as you mentioned, there's lots of iteration between us and the interpretation. So this is actually what is happening in the JSTC solution centers. It will make it a bigger scale, and this is how the OSDU in general is being done. This is not something, yeah, we, we have in plan, and we're going to be discuss it for future. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.